Hello dearies. I hope you haven't forgotten me. I'm Menopause Barbie, your Menopause Taylor, and we're addressing one of the most important aspects of menopause, Alzheimer's disease. We just started the unit on Alzheimer's last week, so if you haven't watched that video, which was video 236, please watch it before you watch this one. You know, I make learning very easy. All you have to do is watch the videos in order. If you don't, you'll make learning hard, and you do not want to interfere in any way with your ability to learn what you need to know about Alzheimer's. In my book, all of chapter 33 is on Alzheimer's, but I'll give you a whole lot more detail in these videos, so use them both. If you're wondering why you need to watch this and all the other videos on Alzheimer's, it's because you really need to avoid Alzheimer's. And if you don't understand what it's about in the first place, you'll probably fall short of avoiding it and possibly fall prey to getting it. So last week, I introduced you to the basic building block of your brain, which is the neuron. And you discovered that learning involves transfer of information from one neuron to another. So you have this neuron, and it attaches to this neuron. Okay, now, the way the information is transported is via a neurotransmitter, which is this green material here. It's a substance that is sent by this neuron, this part of the neuron called the axon, and received by this neuron, and the part of this neuron that receives it is called the dendrite. And this empty space between the two is called the synapse. And this is where the magic happens, because the neurotransmitter leaks into the empty space and is taken up by the second neuron. And voila! You have learned something new. Now, once this connection is formed between these two neurons, you can use it again and again and again, and that's called memory. But what really matters isn't using all these old connections. It's creating new ones. And the more new connections you have, the smarter you are. And the more you learn, the more connections you form. So now remember that distinction between using old connections and forming new ones. While it may not be very pertinent to what I teach you today, it will form the basis for a lot of our future videos. Today we need to talk about the part of your brain that exists outside this neuron to neuron connection. So as you see, I have a board here with six neurons. Each one is connected to only one other neuron. But notice, there's a whole lot of space between the neurons, on the right and on the left of all the neurons. So what is all this space in between these neurons? Does it have a function, or is it just dead space? That's what we'll address today. As usual, the reason you need to watch this is because it is one piece of what you'll need to know in order to understand future videos. I think you've come to believe me about the importance of watching them all in order, haven't you? <laughs> so, I have told you that I buy a whole lot of materials for these props on Amazon, and I go to a lot of toy stores, toy stores too, sometimes even sex shops. <laughs> well, when I found these neurons on Amazon, I was just so thrilled to see that they were gray. And that's because the neurons in your brain form something called gray matter. So the 100 billion neurons that you have in your brain collectively form your gray matter. And did you notice that the area surrounding these gray neurons on this board is white? I put these gray neurons on a white background intentionally, and that's because all of this other surrounding tissue is called white matter. 
So now you know why the title of this video is, It's All a Matter of Gray and White. Your gray matter is absolutely crucial. It is the network of your brain. It consists of all these connections. But the white matter is just as important because it holds the entire network together. So let's talk a little bit more about this white matter. You know how it feels when you suddenly understand something? We use the phrase a light bulb went off. Now, I actually think it would make more sense to say a light bulb turned on. A light bulb turning on is more indicative of suddenly understanding something than a light bulb going off. In any case, the idea of a light bulb turning on is quite apropos because when two neurons connect and send information from one to the next via a neurotransmitter, there really is an electrical event of sorts. It really is like turning on the electricity. It even feels sort of like a light bulb turning on in your head, doesn't it? That's why I've always wondered why we say a light bulb went off instead of saying a light bulb turned on. There is no doubt that electrical activity occurs in your brain as one neuron sends information to another neuron. Now, when it comes to real electricity, what happens when there's too much electricity at one time? There's a break in the circuit, isn't there? Something happens to prevent an electrical surge, right? And that's because the circuit cannot keep up with the pace of electric transmission. Well, guess what? The same thing is true for your brain. So while you want a whole lot of neurons transmitting information to other neurons all at the same time, your brain can only handle so much electrical activity at once. But it's this white matter that makes all the difference in how much electrical activity your brain can handle. The white matter is insulation. Its job is to enable a whole lot of electrical circuits to fire at the same time and quickly. This white matter consists of a substance called myelin. Myelin is actually an outer coating that encases the neurons. And I'm going to use this white ribbon to demonstrate myelin. Myelin actually wraps around the neurons. It coats them. So, for instance, it would be like this. The white matter would basically wrap itself all around the neurons, going from one to the next, coating them, protecting them, covering them up in a way that insulates. And once it coats them, it allows the information to travel faster. Not only can it travel faster, your brain can process more new information at once, too. You see, without myelin, your brain slows down the process of information transmission in order to accommodate the fact that the circuits will be overloaded. But with myelin, the circuits are insulated so that they don't get overloaded. So the more myelin you have, the faster you can accumulate and process new information. In other words, the smarter you are. So having a lot of myelin can increase your ability to acquire and process new information by 3,000%. But myelin formation does not occur quickly. It's a process. You add this coating layer by layer. And how many layers you have depends on how you use your brain. Interestingly, <laughs> it turns out that women tend to form myelin more quickly than men do. Ha, go figure. This myelin becomes thicker and thicker over time if you really use your brain. When Albert 
Einstein died. His brain was studied to determine why he was so much smarter than all the rest of us. And the unique thing about his brain was that his had much more myelin than other brains. So what does this myelin consist of? Well, this is going to surprise you a bit. Myelin is fat. That's right, fat. And this makes sense in terms of its function as an insulator. Because, I mean, fat is a great insulator, isn't it? If you have a lot of fat on your body, it insulates you from a lot of things like cold and injury. So I guess you could say that your brain is the one place on your body where you want a lot of fat. And you can even compliment someone's intellect by calling them a fat head. <laughs> I mean, Albert Einstein had a very fat head. So your brain really is a matter of gray and white. The gray matter constitutes the connections and the white matter constitutes the coating. Another distinction we'll address later in this unit is the distinction between storage of information and retrieval of information. Most of what I discussed today has to do with storage of information. Can you remember the other distinction I told you to keep in mind? <laughs> you see, that's retrieval. <laughs> it was the distinction between using old connections between already existing neurons versus creating new connections. So we have old versus new, and we have storage versus retrieval. Remember that. I hope my props help you understand how your brain works. You know, I could just stand here and say all this in a very purely sophisticated and scientific way. And that would probably make me appear like I had more neuronal connections and fatty myelin coating. But it sure would be a whole lot more boring than using my goofy props. And I'm not really sure whether explaining things with my goofy props makes me <laughs> smarter or dumber. But I don't really care. I feel like light bulbs come on in my head when I'm thinking about how to explain things to you. And for me, that is good enough. If it doesn't make my brain any better, but it does make yours better, I consider, consider that just dandy. Because even if it doesn't do much for my brain, it certainly does a whole lot for my heart and soul. I just love making these videos for you, and I hope you use them to accomplish whatever you want for your menopause. Okay, class is dismissed for today, so now you know what to do. For consultations, DVDs, webinars, or my book, go to menopausetaylor.me. To subscribe, kick, click sub subscribe right here. To follow me, go to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And no matter what, come back next week. <laughs> Bye! <laughs>